Hey everyone, back again for another real estate photography shoot. This time what we're trying to do is I needed to get on this side of this island so I could get a shot behind it showing a different angle of the kitchen. And when I turned the camera that way, I noticed that uh, we're going to need to do something with the stairs. We're going to need to do something down the hall. So I thought we'd go over how I'm going to do the lighting on this one. So first thing I want to show you is where I put the flashes and why. So we'll do that first. So I'm going to be shooting from this angle here. As you can see, the camera's already set up. Um, and in, let's see if I can get the angle there. It's going to be something, let me back up a little bit, something right around there. Um, now, if you'll notice, we can see this area here, and we can also see the stairs, and we can also see down the hallway. So the first thing is, how do we light up? Where's my finger? Yep, this area right here. Well, we're gonna use a flash, and I put it here, and I wanna show you the angle I put it in and why. Okay, I put it here. And if you'll notice, the flash, it's enough to get into the hallway just a little bit and to the stairs um, and fill in this area. If I were to move this flash over here this way, it would actually cause shadows to be thrown that away. So we don't want to do that. So I did line it up here to where it would minimize shadows and help a little bit with the other areas, the hallway and a little bit of the stairs. Next for this hallway, so I went all the way down here towards the end and I aimed a flash straight up and notice where I put it. Remember my photo will be going in this angle so I wanted to move it as far away so I didn't get a flash reflection off of the ceiling. Next we have, and I won't, don't need to go upstairs to show you, but up the stairs is another flash somewhere. Yep, it's up there. And it is gonna bounce off that ceiling and rain down here, all going on at the same time. And what I will be doing where I'm shooting over here is I'm gonna be shooting through an umbrella, a shoot through umbrella, and I'm going to be aiming in this general vicinity to make sure I can light up everything on this side. And uh, we should be able to get this in, I don't know, one to three shots. So let's get started with that now. Okay, as usual, I always like to show you guys getting the composition. I think that's very important. Notice the camera height's high enough to where it gets above the uh, countertop, and I could probably raise it just a tad more here. All right, so I raised it a little bit. Now I'm looking at the left and right. Um, see that to the left where that uh, opening is? I don't really wanna have to light that as well, so I'm gonna turn it maybe to there, and then Use the bubble leveler on my geared head to get it in there. Whoa, guess I accidentally made the flash go off. Okay, so now we are at ISO 320. We are at f-stop 7.1. And uh, I will start taking photos and figure out what the shutter speed is going to be. Okay, we're getting ready to take this photo. And just to give you my settings, even though it's kind of irrelevant because it's really going to just depend on uh, the situation you're in. But that uh, the flash over here to my right is at a fourth power. The one down at the end's at half power, and the one upstairs is on half power. Again, that's always gonna vary depending on the lighting situations that you're shooting in. And I'm gonna be using a fourth power on this, and all I'm doing, I've got uh, the AD200 with a pistol grip, and I'm just putting a, uh, basic shoot through umbrella and holding it a certain way so where I can shoot through it. And I'm triggering everything with the Yongnuo 6032. I've had these things forever. They're really cheap and they work fantastic. So let's get going. I did uh, figure out that I'm going to use a shutter speed of an eighth of a second. So what I'm going to do is pick a point to focus on, which is just going to be that door right behind the sink. Just anything, just need to lock in the focus. Point. Okay, there's one. I, take, I never trust one shot, so I'm gonna take a couple of others. Move this around just to brighten up 
different portions and move any reflections or shadows around. Let me come over here. And I may not need any of those photos I just took. We won't know that till we go and look at them in Photoshop, which we will do next. See you there. Okay, I have the three photos um, out of the ones I took that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this first photo uh, as one of the three. And the second one, which is probably going to be my main, uh, my main photo. And then the third one. First thing I'm going to do, I've already added my uh, uh, presets to all these photos. And I do have a video showing you what my presets and actions are. First thing I'm going to do is go and change the white balance. So I'm going to click on something white. Go to the next photo, same thing, and the next photo, same thing, in the same spot that I'm uh, do using the eyedropper tool here. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is, well, I'm going to raise the exposure here because I'm going to use this part over here to lighten up where it's really too bright here. So let's load all these. I'm going to hit Command A to select all of them. I'm going to open them up in Photoshop, and I will see you there. All right, now that I have all three photos in Photoshop, I'm going to run my action for sharpen. So I'm going to hit File, Automate, Batch, and run a sharpen action on all the photos. Now that that's done, I'm going to start with this middle photo. That's the one I want to start with. I'm going to hit uh, Command A, Command C, Control if you're on a PC, and Command V on the first photo. And that way, on the first layer, I've got uh, this photo, and beneath it, it's a little bit darker in this area here. I do have a shadow there, but I'm going to have to get over that. So, what I want to do there is create a mask. It's a white mask. I'm going to paint with black. So, I'm going to get the brush tool, paint with black. And I'm going to pick an opacity of, well, let's just go with 30. So, what I'm going to do, make my brush smaller here, is I'm going to bring, lightly bring that in here to make it not so bright back there. All right, which worked out really good. We'll look and see if there's any other aspects of that photo that I want to use. It is a little bit brighter, but I don't really see any area that I want to make brighter at the moment. All right, I lied maybe right in this section here. So let's lower the opacity to 14% and lighten that ceiling up just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click, um, excuse me, and flatten image. Then I'm going to hit Command A, Command C, go over here to the last photo, Command V, and see what aspects of this I'm going to use. So I'm going to go back and forth. Now this area right here is a little too bright, and if you'll notice in the one beneath it, it's not as bright, so I will use that. Another thing I'm eyeing is if you'll see the shadow right here, and if I teeter back to the one underneath it, that shadow is gone, all right? So I have an idea of what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the, uh, the bottom layer. This is what the bottom layer looks like. And you'll understand why I did that in a few minutes. But for now, I'm going to go back up to this top layer, hit a mask, just a regular old mask, take the brush tool, go with black, go uh, past the 14 would be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, reveal what's beneath at 14% each time I click and drag. So as you can see, that's not as bright anymore. Let's see what other... I'm going to tame this door down just a little bit. So I'm going to take the opacity down to 8. Brush that on there. Okay, go back and forth. I might be able to get rid of a little bit of that uh, shadow if I... Click and drag that one a little bit. There, that's not as apparent, so I'm cool with that. All right, now I still want to work on that shadow, and that's where that bottom photo is going to come in. So for the method I, I want to do next, I'm going to go ahead and take the changes we just made with these two top layers, shift, click on that second layer, right click, and I'm going to hit merge layers. It's only going to merge the two that I had selected. I'm going to make another mask. Now, underneath it's that same photo, but this time I'm going to select that bottom photo and I'm going to go to Adjustment and Brightness and crank that up some. And the reason being is because it was a little dark there, but I want to use that layer underneath to get rid of the shadow, but I want it to be the same uh, brightness 
matching what we have here. So now I'm gonna go paint with black with opacity. I make this stuff up right here, so 24%. Let's just try that. And I'm gonna gently brush that in. All right, and I see I need to brighten. Let's see if I brighten that up, if it fixes where I went over, spilled it over a little bit. That matches pretty good. I'm gonna go back to that and reverse it and make it uh, start painting with white, which takes away. And I'm gonna take away where I really didn't need to put it, which is right off here to the side. I was only trying to get that shadow over there. So I think we're good. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this image and I'll see you in Camera Raw for our final edits and we should be done with this one. All right, now that I'm in RAW again, I'm going to go ahead and fool the geometry down there to make the cam, or excuse me, to make the photo straight. Um, see which one looks better, auto or vertical. I think vertical looks better. So that is that point. I'm going to go ahead and I'm at 128% zoom, so I'm going to knock that down to 66. I can see that a little bit better and kind of the size it will be on the MLS. Um, I'm going to bring down the highlights just a tad. There seems to be a few bright spots still. Um, I also want to go to the brush tool and I'm going to take highlights down just a little bit. Um, highlights and exposure. So right here closest to where I was at with the, uh, with the light. Bring that down a tad. A little bit over there. Any spot that looks a little bright. That's it for that. I'm going to pick a new brush tool cancel out all these settings there and what I'm going to do is this side of the floor doesn't look as good as this side of the floor well there's a way to fix that I'm going to go with the brush tool and drop the blacks to the negative and I'm going to add a little bit of positive dehaze see if that's enough paint that on the floor it really brings out the details in a floor I always love doing that if it's got this wood grain finish that wasn't enough let me go ahead and just move the black slider now that I painted that in. There. That looks pretty good. Let me just make sure I get it all the way here to the edge. All right. Good. Now, last but not least, let's see if I'm okay with the white balance. If there's anything else I want to do, I'm going to go to auto. Okay, it added plus eight more towards the warm side. Don't think it needs to be that much, but maybe plus three and it went negative one on the tent. I'm okay with that one. So I believe we are done. I hope that helped. I tried to go as fast as I can and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.